recording for me, I suppose, is um, it's something that I got into through composition and is very much at this stage part um, a core part of my compositional process. So for me, it's more about hearing the way particular sounds in an environment behave and what it is about the way these sounds behave that I'm attracted to and that I feel I can enhance somehow through instruments, through uh, visual work, through a place um, and through technology. So really I'm listening for um, particular uh, aspects of a sound that I feel I can work with um, and uh, alter to a certain degree but also remain uh, true to their original um, characteristics. So the Arctic um, trip came at a time when I was particularly interested in, I suppose, expanding the, the field of, um, of field recording. So not just uh, focusing on the sounds that are all around us on our level, but actually trying to get to um, harder to reach sounds, harder to hear sounds. So uh, specifically in the Arctic, I wanted to um, get underneath the ice. And um, I think everybody who thinks about the Arctic, uh, and me included, before I went, thinks about these vast open spaces and silence. Um, and so one of the most uh, striking things about this place um, for me was that, yes, there is this uh, silence and, and these vast uh, spa open spaces, but underneath things are constantly changing and constantly moving. Um, and it's loud down there. I mean, there's um, there are entire sonic conversations happening between these huge, huge lumps um, of ice and these um, glaciers that span 25, 30 kilometers across. Um, and if you can imagine, you know, each little bit of this glacier is probably moving at some in some way. Um, and so once the microphones go underneath, so these are um, hydrophones and they record from all around. Um, and in water, sound will travel much further. So if you manage to get in the middle of all of these huge icebergs and stick your hydrophones all the way down there, then what you're getting is um, it's, you know, this, this huge uh, symphony of sound. Um, with ice cracking, gases escaping, um, uh, air escaping, ice uh, compacting, um, a full, full uh, range of many, many different, uh, different sounds. So Instruments of Ice was um, finally, uh, two years later, the first um, purely musical uh, exploration with these um, Arctic uh, ice sounds. So they can be anything like this would be a typical um, map. Um, for me, uh, the first Thing that always comes with a piece is time. Um, you'll have been uh, noticing that time is rather important uh, to me. Um, and so oftentimes the first thing I will do is map, map time on paper um, so that I have some sense of where things need to happen and, and where they need to fit in, in real time. Um, and then Oftentimes when I'm working with um, field recordings, like in Instruments of Ice, 
then a lot of these notes are simply um, uh, mapping time, um, knowing uh, how long different segments are, um, what, what needs to happen in those segments, um, and then moving through the piece, um, just like a listener would move through the piece. So once, once a piece is in place, then most of my time afterwards is spent um, listening back and, and moving through and taking notes about what I've heard um, at particular points, um, what I've liked, what I haven't liked. Um, so there's a lot of uh, personal notes uh, in here that say things like, um, look up sequence four plus five, add, subtract, silence. Um, there's t 10 seconds too much, um, fade out way too quick. Uh, they're all just simply um, notes to, uh, to myself. Um, that, uh, yeah. So unfortunately to a musicologist they mean nothing. I guess um, for me recording underground um, there, there are many different reasons as to why I've chosen to go this way. Um, I'm kind of interested in an unconscious, an unconscious memory. Um, so does your memory of a place change if the sounds that surround you that you can't hear are then taken away? Can you feel the sound? Um, and is this connected to how we um, how we behave. So a lot of these recordings will be sort of testers to see if um, these kinds of spaces affect other people um, the same way that they affect me and whether this is interesting sonic material. Um, if it's not, then I simply won't use it. I mean, it, it has to be, there has to be a musical result for me. Uh, that's why I do what I do. And um, these aren't just sort of, uh, random uh, experiments.